What's up, mortgage coach community? Dave Savage, and right now I'm going to interview Jim McQuaig out of Washington D.C. What's up, Jim? Hey, glad to be here. Good to see you, man. Good, to, good to see you. So, community, I've interviewed Jim countless times. I mean, he was a top producer back in the day, and today he is a, a branch manager of a highly successful and profitable branch for Churchill Mortgage. And uh, Jim, what I wanted to interview you about was you had watched that interview I did with Scott Nicholson a couple Tuesdays ago on the seller buy down and how it could be used to generate more leads and referrals from realtors. And, and you kind of had a spit on it. You had some, some content you were sharing with your own team and your own branch. Like you made a video for the people that you lead. So, so why don't you walk us through what you did, why you did it, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, so so I think it I think it really you know when you're looking at when I at least when I'm looking at these things, um, I'm always thinking about the value that I can bring to a partner through it, and I think the stuff that Scott did was was awesome, and the value there is is really obvious, um, but. I started thinking about it within the context of a lot of the noise we're hearing in the real estate industry right now around, uh, you know, all these, all these tech companies starting real estate firms and the iBuyers and all that kind of thing. And the fact that, you know, their commissions are really under attack. There's, there, there's a bullseye that's on the real estate commission and everybody's looking to get a piece of that, right? And so I got to think they're feeling pressure from that. Um, I know they are. And so what I recognized when I saw Scott going through his example, which was really beautiful, was I saw an opportunity to take some real value to, to a listing agent. And, and, and here's a thought, you know, one of the things that I ask realtors all the time just to challenge them, and as, as I say, what do you do that's worth 3% of the sales price? Because you think that would be a fundamental question that they would, <laughs> that they would have a ready answer to, right? And, and, a, and a laundry list, and it, it should be like an elevator speech. They, you should be able to wake them up at 3 a.m., ask them that question, and they should just be able to hit it, right? And you should be able to go, all right, that's impressive. But guess what? I've never heard a single one of them give me anything that was reflexive and impressive and seem to be well thought out. So it's sort of like great rates, great service for a mortgage guy, right? So right. I went through that. I think, I think the seller buy down is, is it's one thing that you could help a real estate agent use as a very specific concrete way to quantify their value. And that's what I saw with what Scott showed. And so uh, you want to go into that or you, where, where you want yeah. to go? Yeah, let's, let's go into that. So I do want to highlight a couple of things right now. For any manager that's watching this, to me, this is great leadership. Jim, one, he's always getting smarter and sharper. He's walking, watching mortgage coach videos and content. And then he's putting his context to his team and he's playing it forward. So, so with that said, uh, this whole interview started because he sent me an example of a video he created for his team and some slides that he used. So yeah, why don't you walk us through these slides, you know, kind of the same message that you gave to your team, give to the mortgage coach community. Yeah, so, so we, we employ, um, uh, let's call it a communications construct that we, that we teach our loan officers to use when they're engaging with customers, with referral partners, and really you can use it for anything. But, and it's called explanation of services. We, we learned it from a coach, uh, Michael Burt, that we worked with. And, and back in the day when I, when I did mortgages, I just called it my mission statement. But the thing I like about this is there's a very, um, there's a process of developing it. And so what, what we start out with, instead of, uh, instead of telling people what we do, we tell them, you know, Simon Sinek would, tell, would ask the question, why? Tell, don't tell them what you do, tell them why you do it. This one's a little bit different in that it, you tell people what you believe. And, and it's very powerful right up front as soon as you can 
to, when you're speaking to someone to say, I believe. It really changes the level of the conversation from transactional to, uh, to just a higher level. You could call it relational, but it's even maybe even deeper than that. So tell people what you believe. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing, tell them why you believe it. And so for me, back in the day, when I, just to give you an example, back when I did loans, I said, I believe that as a loan officer, I'm positioned in the life of my customer very strategically, right when they're on the cusp of making a huge financial decision, what for most families is the biggest financial decision. You know, you look at their, their home mortgage and the equity in their home, those are typically the two biggest line items on their personal balance sheet. Now, not for rich people, but for most people. And so, because of that, I believe I have an obligation to become an expert in personal finance, mortgage finance, and to bring good advice to those people so that I can have impact on their family, not just today, but even generationally. You think about the difficulties families are having today. Homes are breaking up, and largely that happens statistically, it's a, uh, we see, due to money problems. And so you look at that and you go, gee, people are making the, a decision about their uh, biggest financial thing. I, as a loan officer, if I could give them good advice, I know this sounds a little dramatic, but I, could, I, I have an opportunity to save that family if they make a good decision and they don't get behind the eight ball or in a bind there. I'm a child of divorce. Uh, I've been divorced. I, I view that as one of the largest failings of my life. And so I want to help people not get in that situation. And so um, then, then the next step would be because of this belief, this is what I do. And then let me tell you a few ways. You know, there's a whole list of six questions that you answer to go down. So I don't, I don't want to go to a whole training on that. But the idea is three ways I do it differently for someone else. And you could use this for a referral partner. And this seller buy down strategy is a perfect nugget to be able to, as you're going through that EOS and, and, and talking to an agent about that, you know, you can see how powerful that kind of discussion is with an agent versus we got great rates, great service, and you can call me 24 seven. You know, this is just a much more powerful connecting conversation to have. But yeah. once you do get down to the ways that you do it differently, here's where you can actually talk about some of the tangible ways that you do it differently. And this seller buy down strategy is so awesome. Um, well, let's go to the next one. I'll well, show you. Oh, go ahead. Real quick, before we do that, I want everybody to catch how Jim positioned himself. And again, this is a guy, you know, when, when you were doing personal production, what were some of your biggest years from a volume perspective? Well, we did, I did, you know, 100 plus million for a number of years. So, so we're talking about a guy who has led companies and teams. He's done it himself and, and it works. So I, everybody talks about, I want clients for life. Make sure that when you're giving advice, you're giving advice for life. You're helping them pick mortgage strategies that have more impact than just, hey, your monthly payment, your cash, your, your cash to close, Every time you provide a, lie, a loan, total cost analysis, and show them the impact over different periods of time that means something to the family. So let's, let's take this philosophy and this framework and apply it to a seller buy down. And, and I love the way you kind of uniquely position this to protect the realtor's commission. I thought that's what was so special about this, Jim. Yeah, I mean, the, the focus I think that Scott had was kind of towards the customer and giving them value, which is tremendous. And so really, I just cut and pasted Scott's example because it was so beautiful. He had uh, the context was, for those that don't remember, is he had a real estate agent contact him with a customer who was interested in this home listed for 750000 but only but wanted to offer six fifty. needed a payment for, for six fifty, And so... Uh, yeah, there it is. And so um, the first column there is the transaction as as the home was listed for seven fifty with the current rate of four and a half at the time. The next one was uh, doing a price drop of thirty four thousand dollars, 
And, and he did this through just doing the seller buy down in within mortgage coach. That, that's where he got the 34,000 because the third column is where he um, was able to do the buy down of 34,000 to reduce the rate down to three and three eighths and get the payment to 3508. When that was compared to a price reduction, you can see on the far right column, the fourth column, the sales price, it, it would require a sales price of 654. So the customer said he want, wanted to get it down to 650. He almost did it with this strategy. And then if you go down to the bottom right hand uh, two lines there, the 34,632 is what was used to buy the rate down from the seller versus 95,604, which is the price reduction that would be required to get it to the same place. So that's kind of the money shot there. The difference between 34,632 and 95,604, that is the value, that's the quantifiable value this listing agent brought to their customer, their home seller, by virtue of providing this strategy. They've got them a buyer, and they're gonna save them a little over $60,000 and get the home sold, which frankly, who knows if the buyer would even have, or the seller would have even agreed to drop it all the way to 650, may not have, may have lost the buyer. So it's an opportunity to save the seller $60,000. If you run the math, $60,000 is 8% of 750,000, the sales price. The biggest problem that realtors are having is justifying 3%. So we've got an opportunity for a realtor to give a realtor some substantive information that they could take to a listing appointment to their, to their customers and show this is an example of how I bring real quantifiable value to the relationship and to my services. And, you know, it's the difference between, that's a, you know, how's, how, in this case, how's the seller not giving a little extra, you know, for providing that kind of value? So anyway, that's, that's what I brought out um, and what, what I saw when Scott was doing that. I thought it was super powerful and potentially, you know, something sellers could, sellers agents, listing agents could take right into their business. So, so guys, this is so powerful. Creative financing is an incredible way to create value, incremental value. So I'm going to put a link down below to this interview with Scott. This is where Jim got the idea. He, he watched this video. I don't know if you were on it live or whether you watched the, the recording of it. I want to remind you guys down below are links to the actual total cost analysis. So Scott covered four TCAs in this report. Uh, there's three right here. I'm going to add this one that we just went through. So again, personally branded advice. Scott, Scott's information, it's got property information, and then it's breaking it down. It's, it's pure value. So Jim, I love the way you took this idea and Scott shared it, but we really didn't talk about how it actually protects the realtor's commission. I mean, I think that's a new idea. That's the new Jim McQuaig idea, you know, how the seller buy down actually uh, can be used to create value for the realtor. And I, I want everybody like play this forward. Think about every creative strategy, cost of waiting. You know, at the end of the day, putting a cost of waiting analysis, if the realtor positions that right, and then you put that cost of waiting together right, you can make the position and you can help the realtor be the hero saying, look, look at this value that you brought to the family. Like, should you stay in your home? Or should you move up? Like, if you think values are going to go up and rates are going to go up, that's realtor value. Like, you, the loan officer, are making it clear, but we need to do a better job of helping the realtor take some of the credit for that. For rent versus own, renting versus owning. If a realtor brings you in and you do a rent versus own and you show the lifetime value of homeownership, that's realtor value. So we need to, we need to train our realtors to... One, bring us in earlier in the process so that we can frame the value of creative financing and we can, we can frame the, the value of making intelligent decisions powered through data and insights. 
But guys, this is a big idea. I would love to see the mortgage coach community um, having these conversations with agents. If you've had a conversation like this, let us know down below. Jim, one thing I want to I want to ask you a favor. I'm going to start asking people that I interview. Would you be willing, like based off this call, if people commented about down below and they either ask good questions or they share the takeaway or they share the TCA, if I picked one person that comments and engages after they watch this interview, um, would you give them a 15 minute, no more than 20 minute coaching session on this strategy? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Love to. So guys, Jim McQuaig, he's, he's, he's a very humble man, so he's not gonna say what his hourly wage is, but it's thousands of dollars. So first of all, thank you for taking the time to bring this value to the community. And whoever comments down below, I'm not gonna say, like the one that I like the best, I'm gonna get you a 15 to 20 minute coaching session with Jim. So give us a like if you got value, give us a comment and someone's gonna get a 15 to 20 minute coaching session with Jim McQuaig. All right, buddy, appreciate it, dude. All right, enjoy. See Take you. Care.